Hey Majesties, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much. So it's going to be a quick one, but it's going to be worth it, right? Now, um, I believe some of you might have noticed that um, some African Americans who returned to the continent, to the motherland, who were eager, all right, they did everything possible, they were so happy, and they came back to the motherland and uh, they tried to, tried to blend in. All right, they came back to the motherland and tried to live with uh, their fellow brothers and sisters and they discovered that it is impossible. Ah, yeah. So, majority of them, or so some of them rather, are returning back to the US, are returning back to Canada, are returning back to different parts of Europe that they left. Because what they expected, they didn't see it. There is, um, I think it should be a Kenyan, is a Ugandan content creator, Yam, that she, she talked about this, I think, a month ago, and it got a lot of interest. A lot of people had their own ideas, a lot of people shared their own story because it, it was about a lady who was sharing her ordeal, not just one, about two, three of them who were sharing their ordeal. All right, uh, in a clip, and I said, um, what they expected, that isn't what they saw. All right, how people perceived them was so bad. Like I said before now, there was a time I was doing a video similar to this, I said, the way the world have molded everything to be, the way the, the mainstream media have painted the whole thing, when you are in Africa, you are poor, you are suffering. When you are in Europe or America, you are rich, you have money. You see the, the effect of this whole um, propaganda. So when anybody coming from the US or coming from uh, uh, Europe to the continent of Africa, there is this, I'm not saying it's a right. I'm not saying what they are doing is, is right. I'm coming to that. But there is this one feeling, okay, they have money, so let's extort from them. Or oh, they are rich people, they don't know what it is to suffer, let's extort from them. And they make Africans look at themselves as not well to do, that. they don't have money, they are not rich. You know, so when they see you now coming from that part, oh, these people are rich. So they'll feel like it's not even bad to ask them to pay sushi. So uh, uh, maybe you go to a store, they'll ask that you pay times two of the price. Especially places that the prices are not fixed, right? They can easily collect times two of the money from you. And again, with what the mainstream media propagate about blacks in America. The mainstream media push this whole idea of blacks in America are violent in nature. They do not have culture. So when they come into the continent, some people have that uh, perspective. They've watched some of these movies and seen the way some of these people behave in the hood, in the neighborhood. Oh, <clears throat> and they'll be like, don't come in without your characterless behavior. We have character here. We have culture here. We are not people that just live anyhow. And that brings disputes. That brings misunderstanding. So our mama, Dr. Arikana, she threw more light into this and the expectations because of course when when you're coming there is a high expectation okay we have been advocating here i have been saying come home come home come home and then you now come home and you get discouraged by what you see i will not be happy because it will be like i ask that you come home but i didn't tell you what you're going to go through mind you we were caught apart. A lot have happened for the, 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 the past almost 500 years. A lot has happened, your majesties. Majority were not born here, all right? Majority of you were born there. You grew up with the, the, the society. You saw information about the continent. You look at us and there are some African-Americans that look at Africans as people that don't know anything. So you see where this whole clash come in? Because the mainstream media have sent out information about the, the both of us. Information that are not proper. Alright? About both of us. 
that should be one. So they divided us and told you lies about us, and then they told us lies about you. So by the time we meet, there will definitely be a clash. And that's why if you are preparing to return to the motherland, you have to listen to things like this. So you should prepare your mind as you plan With what I return. know of the issues that are keeping us together, the difficulties that we are having as African diaspora, continental diaspora, and as African diaspora as African Americans, I know many of us have tried to go home to make a difference. And many of us have come back because the conditions on the ground were not uh, conducive to what we uh, wanted to offer. I used to take doctors on medical missions and you would end up with a whole neurosurgeon, orthopedic surgeon, uh, treating ear infections and sore throats because that's all they could do. The country did not have the facilities they needed uh, to do what, what they do best. Now, there are other reasons why some of us have gone home and, and, and come back. And I'm going to hit uh, this nail by the head because it's something that we must speak to. When we go to Africa as continental Africans who have uh, uh, been two in my husband's country of Ghana, we call these uh, people like me, Bintus. I've been to America. I've been to Britain. We Bintus, we got issues. We go back home with an attitude. We think just because we've been to, we know more than the ones at home. That attitude has got to change. And it's one of the reasons why many people are not making it when the been to's go back home. We also have African Americans who go to Africa thinking, I'm going to tell the Africans I know more than the Africans. Well, guess what? You're wrong. Because Africans have a lot to teach you too. So there's a need for an attitude adjustment realization that we have something to offer, but they too have something to offer us. What is needed is for us to work together because united and understanding each other, that's the only way we can come together in a meaningful way and build the Africa that we want. Looking at uh, the issues that we are dealing with on this side of the Atlantic as well as the, uh, the opposite side, I came to the conclusion that the only way we can effect is effectively go back home as African diaspora to accomplish two things. One, yes, to bring the expertise that is needed. But two, I remember two years ago, President Trump was addressing the African heads of states. And he said, I don't know why you guys are poor. My friends go to Africa poor, they come back rich. Are you with me? So for those who think the African heads of states are calling you to come home because they just want your money, wrong. We are saying, if you don't show up and you stand up and be counted, next time the contracts go to the Chinese, shut up. How do we give you contracts when we don't know where you are? How do we know about your business when you don't stand up? And that is the challenge the African heads of states are running into. That if you, diaspora, if we don't organize, we are going to miss out. The heads of states are saying the diaspora must be in the front along with the Afro champions. They are wanting to create a space for us. So please, if you hear anything else from me, this is the time for us to organize and stand up and let's take Africa where Africa belongs on the world stage. But in the process, we're also helping ourselves. There is nothing wrong with you investing your money in Africa, coming back home to America and play golf like they do. That's what we want you to do. So don't look, look at it any other way. It's a win-win situation. <laughs> Mama has said it and that is it. So, is there anything to add here? No, because she has said everything. She has said everything. I know there are challenges that many African Americans go through, especially when they're coming. You know, some of you come in just to, okay, I'm going for a holiday with the mind of, oh, I'm just going to see how the place look like before I make the decision of going to remain. And you come and then you meet with some challenges or the other and then you get discouraged and you be like, 
um, those people do not appreciate me so let me remain where I am no because you met some group of people that didn't appreciate you doesn't mean everybody didn't appreciate you yes there are issues you face issues like communication uh, you trying to communicate and the other party is not understanding but it's not everywhere that depends on the region you go to the path you go to in any countries you visit in the continent because um, as it is right now the colonial master's language is, is something that is almost general especially when you're in the capital you could easily move around when you talk about being be, be a fraud you talk about being uh, being duped by people there are scammers everywhere not just in the continent not just in the continent the same way I will be careful when I'm in America is the same way you have to be careful when you're here. Because we are all human beings and we have God and the devil residing in all of us. If you like, shout and say, oh, hey, go, you go, fire. There is no death. There is evil thoughts in you. That evil thought is the devil. There is good thoughts in you. That good thought in you is the God in you telling you do this good thing. And most of the time we ignore the good, the good thoughts and we go for the evil thoughts because that is the one that pays us better. And that's where selfishness comes in. So we think the devil we look for is uh, that black man with a horn somewhere far away in one fire. We don't know that he's closer to us than we, 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 we ever imagined. Right? So where the issue now is, is why can't we propagate love? What is that thing that is hindering you for love, from loving your brother genuinely? The, 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 the numbers of scamming other people, the number of um, duping other people, hurting other people, lying to other people within our community shows how, how apart we are. Because if I love you and I see that you are new to an environment, because you are me, you are like me. Even if you're not like me, as far as I see you in that situation, you need help. I study you, you really need help. What is stopping me from giving you the help you need genuinely? Why must I need something from you before I can render that help to you? This is the question we all have to answer. Whether Africans at home or in the diaspora is a question for all of us. When I see a brother or a sister who is new to a place, why can't just why can't I just help the way I do help those other 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 colored people? Eh? Yes, we know it's is colonialism. Yes, we know it's the manipulation through religion. That's why we see a white person and we say, Oh, this one look like God though. Come inside and lie down. Your own brother that look like you is moving stranded. You don't call your brother to come. Because the mainstream media have told you, if you see an African around you, that is a TFO. Or if you see an African-American coming to you, he's a thief. -o. So it's only the white man that you see and can accept. And take to the inner chamber. But your own brother is outside under the rain. Self-hate. Self-hate. And this is it. The more we don't crush down, this, we refuse to crush down this, this that, that very vice. I call it a vice. If we don't crush it down, we will never be able to unite peacefully as the African people, both at home and the diaspora. Because every day I keep talking about African Collective here, I will still say it again, Your Majesties. If you haven't subscribed to African Collective, what are you waiting for? Just one dollar. You have information. Information that you might be deprived of. There are things I can say here. Go to African Collective, you will see it there. Leave your comments and thoughts there at the section, your majesties, and I'll see you in my next one. Until then, love yourself, love others, stay safe, stay positive, always, your majesties. Bye for now.